they came to us and wanted us to make that engine make a thousand horsepower and win the Indy 500. Well, this is the Dyn and Belt BMW V10. It's kind of like me. It needs to go on a diet. I mean, it's way <laughs> too heavy. So they're sitting there waiting to be all torn apart. You know, I've got a 410 in there that makes 800 and some horsepower. And on a racing engine, there's there's basically three proper ways of sealing a cylinder head. Okay, now I hate to ask because this sort of ruins all the cool stuff you just said. Is that like kind of one of the O-rings that? destroyed the Challenger. What's up, people? Well, today we are at Legacy Autosport, which is the road indie team that a while back ago you saw me do my Pro 2000 test at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But anyway, today we're here because of Genius Garage and the V10 BMW engine that is in the Daytona prototype that was donated last year. So this coming next year, Genius Garage wants to do something with that, but the engines were losing compression. So we want to see out what the deal is with that, if that's an engine we want to build, showcase with the students and do in the future, or maybe we want to go another route. So here at Legacy, obviously you can see the Meyer family goes way back to Louis Meyer in 1928 who won the Indy 500. He was the first three-time winner. He started the milk tradition. And of course, Mike, his great-grandson and Butch, his grandson, are here. Now, Butch, if you look around, was on the John Cock team back when, and Butch was also the head of Menard Engine Development. So, long story short, Butch has been building racing engines since way before I was ever alive, and he knows a thing or two. And he was nice enough that they brought the engine here, and we yanked a head off of it to see what's going on, so Butch will be able to give his expertise relating to the motor, and what I can spec as the person leading Genius Garage for the students. And frankly, does it make sense for Genius Garage to run this particular motor in it, or should we consider something else? So let's go and have some fun in the back. What's up, Butch? I like seeing your sprint car looking all pretty. A few more months and we'll be out running the dirt tracks again, having fun. What's the, uh, what's the new name of the group you're running yours with? The new name of the group is the Midwest Throwback Sprint Car Series. We have about 20 guys that run in the series, 20 committed cars to run, and uh, we're going to run like a 10 race dirt series for a point championship. And uh, the difference in this sprint car and like USAC sprint cars or whatever it is, it's a non-down tube. And that's one of our rules is you can't have a down tube car. It's, a, it's basically a, a vintage appearing car. Uh, there's no arm guard on the side because people like to see the driver when they're driving the car like in the old days. Yeah. So we're kind of, but we don't just go out and put around, we race. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, you know, I've got a 410 in there that makes 800 and some horsepower. And, uh, and the guys are, you know, I mean, it's, Everything is current right. on it. It's all up to date stuff and everything. It's just a, a just a. It looks yeah. like a vintage car. So yours is a new built car, kind of the way they were maybe 35 years ago, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's some guys probably running some that are actually older ones, but up to spec now. Yes, exactly. exactly. Super cool. We'll get back into that. So this here Beamer motor. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you looking at for Genius Garage, you guys. But but here it is. If you want to take a peek, this is the Dyn and Built BMW V10. Uh, it was supposed to be making like 720, 740 horsepower afterward. Right. Um, it's uh, it's pretty zoomy. Obviously, it's dry sump. They bored it out a little bit more. It's got a little bit more stroke, a little more displacement. Obviously, individual throttle bodies. And was built up pretty good. Nice motor. what in the Daytona prototype, and we have another one. So, Butch, what did you find out immediately when you yanked the head that we're having some issues with? Well, immediately, I saw that the head gasket was having an issue that um, between the cylinders you can see that the head gasket is basically leaking and that is due to the amount of material that is between the sleeves and the cylinders and generally this is a nicosyl bore uh, must be because it's not magnetic so it's not a it's not an iron sleeve it's a nicosyl bore and the bottom line is is you got to have at least I would say a quarter of an inch of thickness on each sleeve plus at least a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch gap in between for water to go through. So as what I see on this engine is, is, is you've got water all the way around here, you have no water here, you got a ton of concentrated heat and, and that cylinder is just as, as uh, the cylinder pressure raises in each cylinder, it just moves back and forth and, and there's just no way that the head gasket can seal. Well, I'm seeing here, Butch, if you want to come a little closer. So this here, this is a, what, a three-piece multi-layered steel head gasket? Yes. 
I mean, obviously it's real thin. This this is split here. It's been so fatigued. And yeah, because it's all by. burned out. All the you totally got a lot of up. heat concentration in there, and and uh, yeah. So long story short, inherently, and I think this learns a lesson about taking a production engine and going racing. It gets so thin that you know the motor works and makes pretty good power for what it is. Sure. But you're gonna you're gonna eat up head gaskets every probably. 35 40 hours of racing yeah yeah and maybe a little this one went longer um so th of, there there's what we got right one of the things too that happens is as the head gas starts to leak i've taken a dial indicator and run across the face of the block and it has like a, a two to three thousandths divot in the block to where it's been so hot in there that the aluminum has just gone away from it the gasket's pushing on it, just push the aluminum down. That, there's an interesting lesson. So, okay, so obviously this this inherently is a difficulty from going production to uh, racing. And exactly. you, as an example, back when you run those Buick V6s yeah. turbo and in Indy, you, 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 you had some stories about that. What, what was that scenario? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, that, that's, that's true. It's, it's when, a, when a manufacturer contacts a race engine guy and says, hey, we've got this engine, we want to get into a series, it's in our passenger car, we built it for that, and we want to go out and, and advertise and say how great this is. Then the race engine guy tears their engine apart, they give it to him, and he looks at it and goes, wow, I can see this issue, that issue, that issue, but he's kind of stuck with it because that's what they've got. So is what he has to do is do the best that he can with what he has. Yeah. And sometimes things like this, it, that's that's a part of the the process if you want to race it you're gonna have to replace it more often and and stuff like that like on the buick v6 that we ran in indycar i mean that buick v6 was was in a was like a grand am car or whatever it was they had and then they put it in minivans and all that and and they came to us and wanted us to make that engine make a thousand horsepower and win the indy 500 well that was uh that that was makes a lot sense to in the ask, boardroom, you know? doesn't it? Yeah, that was a lot to ask. And 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 we made we made power with that motor, but we never won an Indy five hundred because, you know, generally it wouldn't finish the thing. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Well fair enough. I mean it's pretty nice otherwise, but Genius Garage has got two of these motors. Um it's got two of the transaxles. Were those X Track or MCOs? Mikey, you remember? X Track. They're X Tracks transaxles. And uh so I'm looking at this thinking, okay. That's pretty expensive stuff. These these motors, I think, new were like seventy five grand. Right. As is those trans. How much those transaxles cost new? Oh, uh, they're probably forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand dollars transaxles. Yeah. So we got two of each of those. Yeah. I got some time on it, but they're not bad. And I'm looking at that going, gosh, even if we sold them for a deal, we can build and buy a hell of a, a lot of nice stuff to make that Daytona prototype, kind of a, a nice track car, maybe give somebody a ride on it, or a hellacious to the street car kind of. Right. Well, you know, another drawback to this motor is, 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 and I didn't weigh it personally, but mm -hmm. I looked up on their website, it weighs 520 pounds. Yeah. It's kind of like me. It needs to go on a diet. I mean, it's way <laughs> too heavy. So well, you made some the, notes, <laughs> notes here about that. So what, what do you got here on two yeah. motor comparisons? Well, okay. So here we got this engine is uh, 5.8 liters and um, which is um, 354 cubic inches. Turns 8,300 RPM, makes 720 horsepower. It weighs 530 pounds. I could build you a 360 Chevy that makes 770 horsepower, turns 8,000 RPM, and weighs 350 pounds. So you can save, you know, almost 200 pounds right. of weight on a car. And how and much? Let's face it, race cars are supposed to be built light. They're not supposed yeah. to have heavy motors. Yeah, in. yeah. So. Well, and then then in your uh, the motor in your sprint car, of course, it's running. Uh, methanol but what, right. what kind of power do you think that would make on gasoline oh we had that on the dyno it makes 820 horsepower and that's kind of a low powered 410 mm -hmm. that's a 410 cubic inch that's that's a low power the the most of the 410s are making 900 horsepower yeah and that engine weighs 350 pounds yeah 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 so you know there there's and but now i'll tell you what too i love overhead cam engines for racing because r racing engines should be overhead cam engines but nowadays push rod engines they've got them so reliable with all the work that nascar has done on them and different stuff that you can take a push rod engine go out and run at 8,000 rpm all day and be fine you well they developed I mean? them everybody's developed those so yeah the they've years. developed them so much you, you want to show them reliable. real quick the the buckets and the uh yeah the i was just all that jazz here real quick i was just looking at something kind of new to me i've never had any experience with it but they have like a uh they have a keyed 
I call it a, uh, a cam cup. And as what it does is it has a key in it and, and works, you know, up and down in the in the cam cup bore. That's and what has, the camshaft pushes for. Yeah, the camshaft lobe runs on this. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have a cup that's 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 like this that can't spin, that's mounted, you know, and, and keyed, you have to have a radius on the top of the cup so that the radius of the cam comes around. If it's flat, what would happen? If it's flat, I'd wipe it right out. Right out. Okay. Yeah, right out because it, it couldn't get any lubrication and okay. and. Uh, so anyways, and then they have in this deal, they have like a hydraulic little tappet in the bottom of there. That yeah, it's yeah. like it's a hydraulic, hydraulic lifter, lifter almost. Yeah, yeah, it is. And that's where the pressure comes so, in. It, yeah. yeah, pressure yeah. comes in. It's drilled into the head there, and then they oil feed it with the pressure. And it, it's kind of a cool little system now. That's fairly light for a hydraulic lifter in a streetcar. Yeah, it's light for that, but for a racing engine, it isn't. Yeah. Like on the Chevys, on the, the Cosworths and all of them, we used a cup like this, only it was flat on the top. Mm -hmm. And we drilled holes. I mean, it, it looked like Swiss cheese in the top and everything. And it made the cup way lighter than this cup. And, I mean, when you're talking on a Valtrain, you're talking about grams. Oh, yeah. Grams turn into pounds, depending on what RPM you're turning it. Well, and then you can run lighter spring pressure and lighter Lighter spring and pressure and everything, yeah. And, and the bottom line is, is those cups were not keyed, and they mm -hmm. would spin. So as what we do is you offset the lobe of the cam, so as the cam runs on the cup, it, it spins, spins it. the cup mm -hmm. and lubricates it. It's lighter. I think it's better. You know, I, I uh, and then this hydraulic deal for racing engine, I like to see like just a regular, like a flat tap, but like a, like a, you yeah. know, a lash cap or something like that. It works all right, but it looks like the engineers got at this. Well, you this, know, this engine was designed for a passenger car. Yeah. So they did that because that's passenger car stuff. But when you get to a racing environment, you know, it's a lot different, you know, got it. So let me ask you this. So this is pretty neat stuff. Um, and obviously we got it and we could build it, but you think uh, Genius Garage better off selling this stuff to BMW geeks that want to go fast and then building our own thing out of something more economical? That's what I'm thinking, yeah. I'm yeah. thinking that with the weight of the engine and with the issues that it's having, we want to put something together that's going to be reliable and run and people can go yeah. have some fun with and not worry about blowing a head gasket or yeah. whatever. And yeah, I think that would be the be the way to go. Cool. I'll tell you one other thing too yeah. is, and I don't want to keep bad mouthing this engine. No, you, it's but, all right. Okay, here's the head bolt. First of all, <laughs> in a racing engine, you don't lose, you don't, excuse me, use bolts to put the cylinder heads on. You use studs. Uh, these are number one pretty small number two. They have no grip length on them Meaning so, the, the shank or the shaft meaning the yeah. shank of the bolt which doesn't have threads mm -hmm. Generally on a, a proper bolt. I mean you run the threads and then you have a grip length So when you torque it the bolt can stretch this bolt right here I don't know it's just uh, and as small <laughs> as it is and as massive as that head is It just seems to me like if they increase the size of the stud, does it need all those threads? No, it doesn't. Why do you think they put that in it? I, I don't know. Maybe yeah, they got a deal right. on these bolts or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, no. It, my, my deal on a racing engine, I always use studs. Always use a stud because the grip link, get the proper stretch. It, it attaches the head to the block tighter, mm -hmm. and you don't have any issues. So Yeah. Yeah, it's... Well, it's not bad stuff. It's nice seeing it apart. No, it's not bad at all. It really I, isn't. It's. Uh, I hugely appreciate you taking the time to take a peek and give your expertise. Oh, it was a lot of it. fun. I love. I love working on. Like I, I don't. Like I said, I don't have any history of this motor. I've never built one completely. But taking this off and looking at it, I've seen a lot of things that I've basically never seen before. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, and did you want to talk about the ceiling ring deal? On a, on a racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about okay. that. So this is a multi-layered steel head gasket. My Viper's got one of those in it. Right. On a racing engine, there's there's basically three proper ways of sealing a cylinder head. First of all, you don't run head gaskets on an actual racing engine. You O-ring the water ports and you O-ring the oil galleys, the oil, the, the, the oil feed holes. Then is what you do is on the cylinders, they either cut a ring or they cut a groove down and you use either a gas filled tubular ring, a cooper joint, or they have copper beryllium rings that go around. Now and what's that cooper joint? A cooper joint is a, is, a, is a stainless steel ring but it has a spring inside of it. So when you clamp the head down, you will compress it a certain amount and that spring pushes back and has mm. tension. My favorite uh, way of sealing a cylinder head is they have these tubular rings, it's a piece of tubing, 
they put myazide gas inside of it and then they weld them mm. and nasa uses it on like the space shuttle and different things in their exhaust systems when they bolt two flanges together they put these rings in there these stainless rings and when the heat goes through the pipe it makes the ring expand so it seals well we got those rings and and um have done it on some of the engines and you and, and basically you don't have to cut a groove you cut like a notch in the <coughs> cylinder you fit the ring down in there and then you clamp the head against it so the heat from the combustion will go out and expand the ring so oh. even if that head tries to move a little bit on that block that ring will still seal because it'll conform to the head and it'll work its way around that's cool okay now i hate to ask because this sort of ruins all the cool stuff you just said is that like kind of one of the o-rings that destroyed the challenger because wasn't that an o-ring failure or something I don't know if it was one of those failures. Well, I remember not, hearing about it. I was, I was <laughs> looking at that. You know, you know, unless you were nasty, you really wouldn't know. Yeah, you probably wouldn't. Okay, I remember him talking about something like that. Yeah. Okay, now that I've ruined the video. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. That's good to know. Now, uh, okay. So, uh, what kind of engines would you suggest, or might be more fun that fit the Genius Garage bill for that Daytona prototype? I mean. I don't know. We could we could put a, an all aluminum, you know, uh, Chevy in there or Ford or whatever. You put a sprint car motor in the thing. I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, it'll fit in there. It'll be lighter. Um, you know, you can still turn it eight thousand RPM and yeah. uh, and it's going to be pretty darn reliable. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be pretty cheap. It's not going to be seventy five thousand bucks to build one. <laughs> Fair enough. So, <laughs> okay, well, this will be fun. All right, Mikey, you want to tell them anything? What's going on here? Um, we're waiting on new tubs yeah we're waiting on yeah. new tubs because racing's too dangerous and you shouldn't get bonked on the head apparently so we have to spend a crap load of money hey if you get upside down in that pro car you'll be happy that yeah, yeah that's true no, and i'm sure. married to the camera person right now yeah, my wife and she'll appreciate that <laughs> yeah. yeah no that's true it is good for that safety but the big thing big issue we're having is, is just you know with magical covid and all the other stuff going on the uh the shipping nobody wants to unload the shipping containers so we're we're just at the mercy of them waiting on our yeah our race it's cars just typical racing hurry up and wait yeah and uh mm -hmm. and then after the stuff hits the door it's going to be hurry up again to get to the track you yeah know? so so we got uh we got the pro car and the usf 2000 car that was the one i ran and then there's the one that uh, victor ran at indy so they're sitting there waiting to be all torn apart and then across the shop now you know what, I'm going to show them right. Here, come run with me across the shop. Okay, so this is the uh, one Simon was testing, the USF car. And this is what's left of the carbon tub and then the bit of bodywork in the under tray here, which we can, it's like no longer usable. Like we can't do anything with it, right? No, there's nothing. I mean, still trying to figure out what we want to do. I mean, I was just, once we get all three cars together, I was just going to hang them on the wall. That'd be cool. Until we figure out. I mean, they, if somebody wants to build a cool hot rod or... Sweet simulator rig. Simulator. Yes. Yeah. Hit me up if you want to buy one of the tubs for a sim, which would actually be easy because they don't weigh a whole lot. No, those things are light. You Super just light. Put them in there, hook up your steering wheel, pour yourself a seat and some pedals, and bam, sim rig. Yeah. Maybe I should do that. That'd be cool. Get, get yeah. some... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's all I got. Should we... Uh, we got anything else cool to say? Everybody have a Merry Christmas and... Yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll go racing next year. Since 2013, the Genius Garage educational programs have been responsible for launching the careers of young engineers, mechanics, and fabricators. So this holiday season, consider checking out Genius Garage and its website, geniusgarageracing.com, and making a donation. Whether it's small or large, what we do together is how we shape a better future for everyone. Thanks for watching.